our friend uh, that we met on the on the docks, he uh, he actually invited us to, to uh, look at some of his dogs. He's raising Greenlandic dogs. These dogs he uses in the winter time to fish, to pull his sled out and fish the traditional way for halibut. It was a pretty amazing experience to come out and have him show us his dogs. This is my uh, entrance to my dog area. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a very big uh, area. You have to follow me behind. Okay. In a line because uh, you're not allowed to go too close for the big ones when foreigners come. They so be. they'll attack? You never know when they will. They might attack us. They might be a little bit uh, aggressive. These dogs are huge. Uh, the the full-grown ones are huge and they're still somewhat wild. They're domesticated but they still have a big wild component to them. They're somewhat like wolves. They were described to me as they do have some wolf blood in them. It's cool. Right? Look at this. And these are my four puppies. Is it okay, is, is it okay are, for us to, to pet them? Yeah, Conrad? you can pet them. What's it doing? There's a puppies. Hey. Wow. <laughs> and then in the in the winter time, you feed them when you're sledding. You feed them a chunk of seal, or I, 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 we try to feed them not frozen as possible. But, uh -huh. uh, but their teeth, they are adapted to eat frozen fish and meat. So they're really adapted to this environment. They, yeah, they, exactly. they, they exactly. evolved here yeah. basically. First Inuits came to Greenland in 2500 BC, I think. The dogs here in Ilulissat are the oldest breed in the world. They're working animals. This is how these people in Ilulissat thrive. It's how they live. When the ocean freezes over, they actually use the dogs to sled them and their gear out on the ice and go halibut fishing. Without them, the people of Ilulissat couldn't survive. There is 4,000 people that live here and 3,500 dogs. Yeah, they're getting around that part. They're all getting. <laughs> There you go. What we got to witness was him feeding the dogs, which was real interesting. He came out with some uh, halibut and some seal meat, and the dogs immediately started going crazy, just barking like crazy. They knew what was going to happen. Completely different. This is something. Okay, don't eat me. That'd be great. Oh, that one looks pissed off. Oh, boy. I sure hope those chains hold. That's all I can say. I literally feel like I'm standing in the middle of a pack of wolves right now. It's just, this is wild. The fact that this this town is ringed by valleys of dogs, uh, to me, indicates that these people still still really cherish the old ways of life. They cling on to it. They don't want to lose their culture. The owners of dogs aren't just you know, fishermen and you know, people who make their life by fishing. They're also store owners and diplomats and politicians. So it, it transcends just the, the one fisherman who does that for his living. It's a way of life for, for everybody. Basically.